In this video, we're gonna generalize a result that we looked at way at the beginning of the course, and that is the nested closed interval theorem. So let's recall what that says real quick. So if we've got this sequence of closed intervals, and what's very important here is that we're closed on both endpoints. So we have I sub n equals A sub n to B sub n, where A n and B n are real numbers. That means neither of them are infinite. In other words, this is a closed and bounded interval, and it satisfies this nesting condition. So I1 contains I2, which contains I3, and so on and so forth. Then the infinite intersection of these is non-empty. So like I said, we proved that earlier. That was um, a result of the axiom of completeness of the real numbers. So we wanna ask now, can we generalize this closed nested interval theorem? And maybe first, could we generalize it just to closed sets? So we will find out that that's impossible, but maybe we could um, generalize it to closed and bounded sets. In other words, compact sets. So recall in the previous video, we proved that a set is compact if and only if it's closed and bounded with the other definition having to do with every sequence having a convergent subsequence where that convergent subsequence converges to something in the set itself. So I'll let you guys review that if you need to. So like I said, our goal is to generalize this nested closed interval theorem. Let's first show that we cannot do it with just closed sets. So let's go ahead and set the set A n to be the set n to infinity. And so in other words, A1 is the set 1 to infinity, where I include 1. A2 is the set 2 to infinity, where I include 2, and so on and so forth. So notice these are all closed sets, which is pretty easy to see. They contain all of their limit points. So I'll let you guys check that if you need to, although we did something similar to this earlier in the channel. Okay, great. And they also satisfy this um, nesting condition. A1 is contained in A2, which is contained in A3, and so on and so forth. But now I'm gonna make the claim that they do not satisfy the conclusion of the nested interval theorem. In other words, the intersection is n goes from one to infinity of A sub n, in fact, does equal the empty set. So let's see how to do that. So let's suppose that x is inside the intersection um, from 1 to infinity of a sub n. Good. But now, by the Archimedean principle, there exists some capital N, which is a natural number, such that um, capital N is strictly bigger than x. So like I said, that's the Archimedean principle. I'll let you guys look that up if you need to. But capital N being bigger than X tells us that X is not inside um, the set A sub capital N, which let's just recall that is equal to the closed interval N to infinity. Great, so let's see what we've got. We've got X is in the intersection, which tells us that it's in all of these sets. In other words, we know that x is in the set A n, but then by the Archimedean principle, we have x is not in the set A n, but those two things are mutually exclusive. In other words, we have reached a contradiction. So what are we contradicting? We're contradicting the possibility of there being an element in this intersection. So if that's an impossibility, that means this intersection is empty. So in other words, we cannot generalize this closed nested interval theorem just to plain old closed sets, but we can to compact sets. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're ready for the main result of this video. So we wanna suppose that we've got this nested sequence of non-empty compact sets. So in other words, K1 is compact, it contains K2, which is compact, which contains K3, and so on and so forth. Then the intersection as n goes from one to infinity of k sub n is non-empty. So notice that mimics this nested interval theorem but with compact sets instead of these like closed and bounded intervals. And so you wanna think about like these compact sets as being the natural generalization of closed and bounded intervals. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this goes. 
So first of all, we want to construct a sequence which is inside of this compact set and then somehow use the compactness to help us out. And we're gonna do that in the following way. So for all n, 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 we wanna pick some arbitrary a sub n, which is n k sub n. So we know these are non-empty, so that means we can pick just an arbitrary element from them. Great, and now what we wanna notice is that if we form a sequence out of these numbers, so I'll write that as a sub n as n goes from one to infinity, then that sequence is a subset of k1. And that's because of this nesting right here. So notice we chose a1 from k1, a2 from k2, but this subset relationship tells us that a2 is in k1. A3 from K3, but again, the subset relationship tells us that A3 is in K1, and so on and so forth. But now notice, we know that K1 is compact, so let's go ahead and write that down, which tells us it has a convergent subsequence, and we'll generally call that A sub N sub K, and I'll just say that that converges to A. And then the important thing here is that it converges to A, which is in K1. We get that from the compactness of K1. We get the existence of a convergent subsequence from that compactness. Actually, we get that just from the boundedness. And then we get that the limit is inside of the set from the closedness of K1. Okay, great. And now what we wanna do is show that this limit point A is actually inside all of these. So let's go ahead and see how that goes. So let's fix some arbitrary capital N, which is a real number, or sorry, a natural number. And then notice for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N, we have a sub little n is inside of k sub capital N. That's because of the nestedness. So the nestedness tells us that k sub capital N plus one is a subset of k sub capital N, and then k sub capital N plus two, and so on and so forth. But now we have shown that the tail of the sequence is inside of k sub capital N, but what that tells us is that the tail of the subsequence is also inside of k sub capital N. So in other words, a sub N sub k is an element of k sub N for all N sub k bigger than or equal to capital N. But now we can view the tail of this subsequence as a convergent sequence in its own right that converges to A. And so, so all we've done is taken off finitely many terms from this sequence, so that does not change the end behavior of this sequence, which means it still converges to A. But then the fact that Kn is closed means it contains all of its limit points, which means it contains A. So that means A is inside of K sub N. But since n was arbitrary, we know that a is in fact inside of k sub n for all n. But that means that a is inside of this intersection as n goes from one to infinity of k sub n, which is exactly what we needed to show in order to show that this is not empty. And that's a good place to stop.